Hello, and welcome to the Nebius Network. Microsoft has signed a $17.4 billion five-year AI infrastructure deal with Nebius Group. Since the announcement, the stock rallied. Funding was secured. Here's the full update. The headline number is $17.4 billion over five years. This isn't a single upfront check. It's contracted AI capacity that ramps as infrastructure comes online. The customer is Microsoft, and that matters. A top hyperscaler committing to long duration capacity signals trust and puts Nebius on the radar for enterprises and governments. Capacity is anchored in Vineland, New Jersey. It's close to major East Coast hubs for power and latency, so Nebius can stage racks, light capacity in phases, and recognize usage-based revenue. Here's where the capacity lives. Vineland, New Jersey sits near New York, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. AI workloads benefit from proximity to users, data, and reliable power. Vineland offers all three and shortens a path for U.S. customers. You've heard the phrase AWS of AI. Let's hear the positioning from Nebius directly. Their CRO explains they're not just selling raw GPU time, but a full AI cloud that you can plug into. I want to first start talking about what Nebius actually does, because there's a lot of people listening to this show um, that have heard the name. They've seen the stock price go up. They think it's somehow related to the AI boom. So I want to turn it over to you. Can you explain to us in simple terms what Nebius does? Certainly. We um, typically position ourselves as a full stack AI infrastructure player. What that means is we provide the hardware, the software, and the services that an AI engineer would need to be able to build the special AI applications or models or services that they're standing up. You can think of us, if you go back to the early days of cloud compute and storage, like AWS, we are the AWS of AI. Think of Nebius as an AI first cloud layer, GPU capacity plus software and services so customers don't have to build it all themselves. Before we continue, for those who are unfamiliar, let me just explain some of the terminology used in our previous videos and will continue to use going forward. ARR is annualized recurring revenue, which is the subscription run rate you'd expect if today's contracts continued for a year. Faster ARR growth usually means a more predictable business. Utilization is how much GPU capacity is actually in use. High utilization means the hardware is earning. Low utilization means idle capacity waiting for demand. A ramp is the step up in consumption after a contract starts. So begin small, migrate workloads, then scale. So expect Microsoft's usage to follow that pattern. So this is what happened after the deal by date. So on September the 8th, 2025, the Microsoft deal was announced after the bell and shares jumped in after hours. On September 9th, the stock closed sharply higher on heavy volume. And then on September 10th to the 11th, Nebius launched at $3 billion in financing, $2 billion in convertibles and $1 billion in equity. The equity was priced at $92.50 convertibles later upsized. Let me just quickly explain what a convertible note is for those of you who might not know. A convertible note is a loan that can turn into stock later. The company borrows now and pays interest like a bond and investors can convert at a preset price. If shares trade above that level, investors often convert, which dilutes existing shareholders. If not, it stays a bond and is re repaid at majority. Companies like converts because they raise big sums quickly with less immediate dilution and usually a lower coupon thanks to the conversion feature. Coupon is just another word for interest. From the deal pop, shares consolidated after the financing and then pushed higher. As of today, the stock price of Nebius is around $111, but that's because the market is down overall. This could be a good time to accumulate shares before earnings. Don't say I didn't warn you.
and some people may be under the assumption that the Microsoft deal should be showing impact on the stock price continuously, sending the stock price soaring. However, it is a myth that the full $17 billion hits revenue right away. The fact is that revenue ramps as capacity goes live and gets used. So it will take some time. This agreement provides multi-year demand visibility. So Nebius can plan capacity, hiring and financing against a five-year commitment. It accelerates scale and speed. With Microsoft locked in, Nebius can phase Vineland. They can power on, rack in, validate, then ramp workloads and revenue. Strategically, Nebius leans into the AWS of AI, not just GPUs. It's a software stack for orchestration, scheduling, monitoring, and compliance. That raises switching costs for companies and supports higher margin platform revenue. The reality check is that dollars arrive over time. Margins depend on utilization, power costs, and deployment timing. So we'll watch utilization, CapEx pacing, and Vineland go live milestones. Since you've been following Nebius, you most likely will have heard of another company called Iron, who have also signed a new deal with Microsoft. Before the comparison, I'll give you a quick intro to Iron. Iron evolved from crypto mining to clean power, high density compute. Its edge is cheap, fast to deploy power and running the physical stack of power, cooling and sites. In its Microsoft deal, Iron must build and power capacity with Microsoft prepaying a portion. It's an industrial capital intensive model. Every new megawatt needs new spend. Both Nebius and Iron signed big GPU agreements with Microsoft, but they're built very differently. So this is the deal structure. Iron's contract is about $9.7 billion over five years for approximately 200 megawatts. Microsoft puts in $1.9 billion up front and Iron finances the rest, which is heavy debt. Plus, Iron runs the physical build out and power. It's essentially industrial hosting. Nebius's partnership is $17.4 billion over five years for approximately 300 megawatts total, which is about 250 megawatts of effective IT load. Nebius used convertible notes and internal cash not heavy debt, and it sells more than compute. It bundles an AI software stack for orchestration, scheduling, monitoring, and compliance. So Iron's model is capital intensive, roughly $8.8 .8 billion of spend for about $1.94 billion of annual revenue, with approximately 4 to 5% pre-tax margins. Nebius targets stronger unit economics about $13.9 million of revenue per megawatt per year versus $9.7 million for Iron, with more than 70% margins and an estimated 20-25% to return on invested capital, helped by multi-tenant monetization of the same GPUs and lower debt drag. Iron is evolving into clean data center ops, credible, stable, but less scalable because each new megawatt needs new capital. Nebius aims to be a full stack AI platform for training and inference across hyperscalers, startups, and sovereigns. It's stickier with higher switching costs once customers integrate. So in short, Iron builds the walls, Nebius builds the platform. You may be wondering why Nebius gets more cash per megawatt than other near clouds, right? The short answer is efficiency. Beyond owning land and power, Nebius designs its own hardware and systems to squeeze more compute out of the same electricity. Internally, Nebius points to a mean time between failures of about 33 hours and a mean time to recovery near 12 minutes. This is versus roughly 9.8 hours and one hour for standard setups. This cuts the downtime and wasted cycles. So if the same megawatt delivers more completed jobs and higher utilization across the year, it naturally commands a higher price. And to be clear, that doesn't knock other companies like Iron. Their deals fit their models. 
this just simply explains the pricing gap. So what we want to do is watch for quarter three earnings on Tuesday, November 11th, pre-market. We're looking for revenue run rate, utilization ramp and capex plans. Also concrete Vineland milestones and post raise balance sheet detail. Wall Street expects about $156 million in quarter three revenue. Analysts see a loss of roughly 50 cents per share. We'll watch whether management reaffirms or updates its year-end ARR target of $900 million to $1.1 billion. We'll also check if core adjusted EBITDA stays positive as capacity scales. Details on the Microsoft ramp at Vineland will be key, especially go live milestones. The call starts at 8 a.m. Eastern Time or 1 p.m. UK time on Tuesday, November the 11th. It's going to be a very important day. For context, quarter two revenue was $105 million. Consensus implies roughly 48% sequential growth in quarter three. That's huge. Now, for a balanced outlook, we have five quick risks associated with Nebius. The first being customer concentration with Microsoft. Microsoft is great validation, but reliance on one large buyer can cut both ways. Second is power and build timelines at the new data center. Delays can push the revenue out. So number three is GPU supply and install timing before capacity earns. So the hardware must arrive, be racked and lit before it starts earning. Number four is dilution risk from convertibles. If shares trade well above the strike, and finally, utilization. Ramps are in a stair step pattern, so it's not gonna be instant. So we have three potential outcomes for the upcoming earnings call, a bull base and bear case. The bull case is if revenue is near the high end, if the ARR is raised and clear Vineland go live dates are mentioned. That would be a great case for us. The base case is if revenue is roughly in line the ARR is reaffirmed and the EBITDA is steady. And the bear case is if there is a miss or softer guidance and less clarity on the Microsoft ramp. But I can't see this happening to be fair. The team is just too experienced and they know what they're doing. So remember, this is not financial advice. This is just for entertainment purposes only. Which outcome do you think is most likely? out of all the three cases I, I just mentioned. Also, do you think Nebius is the AWS of AI? Comment down below. We would love to hear your thoughts on this. Well, that's the latest on Nebius after the Microsoft deal. The numbers, the funding, and what to expect on November 11th. Subscribe and stay with the Nebius Network. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.